Hi, and welcome to the Leader Automic Show. Uh, we're here today with Dr. Charles Chow, all the way from Singapore. Thank you so much for making the time to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me, Lily. Now, um, I hear you have a new book that is just out. Yes. So it's called Management Efficacy. Right. Yeah, by McGraw Hill. Yes. Uh, you're an author now, but you came from a very, very different background. Uh, I hear yes. you were in the military for many, many years. Yes. How, how did you move from the military to, to now writing about management? Seamlessly. Because, Seamlessly. Yeah, because of course. as a military person, you need to have leadership. True. And from there, you need to know the bolts and nuts. And that's how most of the things are now in the book. And explain to us a little bit about your military history. My military history? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, um, I started off uh, in the Singapore Navy, then I mm. was lucky enough to be selected to be the first Singaporean to be trained in Germany. Mm. Three years first as a midshipman, then they decided to allow me to study there, and eight years. So then I then uh, commanded a Singapore Navy ship, and then I was in charge of many things. Ultimately, and then setting up the Singapore to, Police Coast Guard uh, as well. To do the, from policeman, I became a, I mean, from a Navy man, I became a policeman overnight. Wow. So then from policemen, then I went to Trade Development Board. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of doing Germany, where I was fluent with the language, they now put me to India. Yes. And then uh, that was for two years. Mm. And then after that, then uh, my uh, bond, more or less, uh, was completed without breaking it. Yes. Then I started my own business. Right. Mm -hmm. And was that the East-West? Group, yeah. Uh, yeah, the East-West group right. that deals with high potentials in Germany and Absolutely, India. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So let's talk a bit about your book. Sure. Uh, what is management efficacy? Um, I wanted to call it uh, the efficacy of management. There's too much of a mouthful. <laughs> so one housewife said, why don't we just call it management efficacy? Mm -hmm. The essence of it is I'm putting two very uh, key words in management together. Mm -hmm. One is called uh, efficiency, mm -hmm. the other one is called effectiveness. Yes. So when you have efficiency plus effectiveness, then you have efficacy. So then I need to invent another word. So if you have neither efficiency nor effectiveness, then we call it effervescence. Yeah, effervescence, correct. A lot of noise. Yeah. And let's, let's talk to those terms because to a lot of people, it's just all the words that start with E, right? But okay, so you say F efficiency is doing things right. Mm -hmm. And then effectiveness is doing the right things. Right. So then efficacy is a combination of both. Yes. Okay. All right, and then effervescence is, is none at all. Right. So that's the what you want to completely. I put it into a nice quadrant if you yes. like, can look into the book. He's yeah. got a fantastic quad. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic quadrant in the book. You you got to right, look out right, for it. Right. Okay, and um, what's really interesting I found about your book was that it draws wisdom from the the Bhagavad Gita. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. You know we hear about uh, Sun Tzu, Art of War, and and sure that's been sort of. Um, done before in terms of drawing principles from there. Mm. But what inspired you to then look at the Bhagavad Gita and say that, you know, there's so much we can learn from uh, Actually, from everything came by accident. Um, I know nuts about the Gita many, many moons ago. So um, when, I, when I was in Trade Development Board, we had to bring delegations and we get nice hotels. And in every hotel, you have the Bible. And mm. next to the Bible is the Gita. Mm. So, well, we started reading it. But what impressed me most was uh, when I visited one of the uh, Indian uh, very good uh, businessmen, uh, he had a factory. And uh, next to the factory is a crash. Children were chanting the Gita, you know, mm. early in the morning, 8, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Mm. So that, that sets me thinking, if you really want to do business with Indians, you have to know the yeah. Gita. Yeah. So that started my learning. And then it was just self-study and reading. Oh, more than self-study. So. I think uh, I overcrowded oh, with too many books. <laughs> uh, but more important thing, you can't learn. I mean, Gita is something that's very, very fascinating. Mm. Uh, every time when you reread it, you mm. get new insights. And uh, I must confess that I'm a forever student of the Gita. Mm. I can never finish reading the Gita. Mm. There's so much in it. Right. Yeah. And just um, some context as well for viewers that may not be familiar with the Gita. Right. So the Gita forms part of the Mahabharata. The, the, uh, the, the Mahabharata. Okay, the Gita is part of the Mahabharata. Yes, yes. correct. Yes. And the Gita itself talks about... It's called uh, the Song of God. Basically, mm. uh, in 700 verses or shoklas, uh, they have actually the quintessence, the essence of the Hindu religion. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. With uh, words of wisdom given specifically to uh, it was Prince Ar Arjuna. Arjuna. Yes, Arjuna. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, what's uh, what are some lessons 
that uh, we can learn? I know you've spent a lot of years studying this, but what are one or two key lessons that you think really jump out at you uh, when you look at the Gita? Well, the most significant thing that I would like to share is this called inner firmness of purpose. Hmm. In every one of us, there's this intimate calling and this drive, this Elan, like you now, you know, you're so passionate about this work. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Deuteronomics, I can see that. Mm -hmm. you know? But that is a process where you need to discover instead of develop. You know, you, mm. if it's not in you, you can't do it. Mm. You, know? you can't like, develop something that's not there. Uh, you are now in a leadership training institute. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, there's different schools, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I share is that Arjuna, you know, is a warrior, so he has mm -hmm. to fight, and he didn't want to fight because, you know, he knew that he would have to kill his relatives and friends. Mm -hmm. But then, from the Gita, is that uh, you know, if it's your duty, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. right? So, uh, the biggest takeaway here is really from doing whatever you're doing, you focus on the process instead of the product. Today in business mm -hmm. is what. Well, you want to have your KPI, you want to have your end result. Mm -hmm. But you know, as long as you get it, you know, bottom line met, voila, you've done mm -hmm. it. But it is the process of doing it that is more important. And I think we are losing out. We are missing you know, many of these uh, in some schools of thought. Mm. And my contribution here is really, it's about time for us to go back a little bit mm. you know, to our ancient wisdom. Mm. And I think uh, a lot of things are there that uh, we can uh, uh, splice into our daily uh, mm. operations. How would you integrate more focus on process in the business environment? Like you say, we're so fixed on, you know, it's KPIs, it's the results. How, how can there be more um, awareness of the process? Well, um, the, 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 the trend here is really, if you were to really focus on the process, mm. the results will take care of itself. Mm. It's just that, you know, you have the ingredients for cooking, mm. you put them together, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you mix them and you put it into the oven. Mm -hmm. The oven does the thing. You mm. don't have to do anything. Mm. So likewise now, you know, if you have a certain a way of ensuring certain things are done, mm -hmm. the results will come. Mm. The challenge here is you want things fast, if not faster, cheaper, but uh, yeah. everything you know, in, in those lights. Yeah. Then we have to have a rethink as to what is the result really for? Mm. You know, yes. We're talking about now profit, profit, profit all the time. But mm. the question is profit for what? Yeah. You know? yeah. And the challenge here is when I ask my students, you know, when is profit enough? Mm. It's never enough. So uh, it, it's, it's come a point where you, a need becomes a greed, yeah. then um, you know, that all the other consequences will follow. Yeah. So with the Gita, you would have this inner firmness of purpose. You would know basically where to draw the line. Mm -hmm. Not that you will, you know, I and mean, this is not a, you know, a, a discussion about ethics or about uh, you know, morale. It's really you know, that drive in you to say, you know, you know, where is that social responsibility that you contribute? Mm, that's fantastic. There are three main things that you raise in your book. Um, mm -hmm. So there's number one, uh, you talk about the components of efficacy, right? Resilience in delivery, mm -hmm. opportunity for deliverables, and then detachment from results. Right. Could you briefly explain to us what those three If I may just start mean? from the bottom, that's detachment. Yeah, complete. Now yeah, the, the, complete. the English word detach is to move away, all right? Mm -hmm. And to distance oneself from it. Mm -hmm. Now it appears, and that's a difficult translation which is from Sanskrit, uh, basically, what we, what is really meant is really you are now more involved. You dissolve yourself into that situation, and you're totally immersed in it, so mm. that your work becomes worship. Mm. Uh, for want of a better word, you know, it's called sanctification of work. You now bring that work to a higher level. Uh, to be attuned to your calling. Mm. Now, the standard thing that we learn in, in, in management science is what uh, transactional. I pay you work, transactional. Mm. Then Greenleaf says about transformational. Now, because you are my employee, as you work with me, you grow and you become better, organization is better, everything mm -hmm. is better. But what the Gita now brings into the picture is transcendental. We now work together for a higher purpose. Mm. What's all this for profit? What's all this for KPIs? Basically, is to serve the customer, mm. right? If you don't have the customer, the organization doesn't exist. Mm. So 
what is this customer for and how can you be relevant to this customer? Mm. And in so doing, then you would have to move and adjust and be attuned to whatever that is required. Mm. So again, we come back to this con this purpose. Right. Yeah. Purpose. Inner firmness of purpose. Inner firmness of purpose. Right. And when you mentioned resilience mm -hmm. as well. So resilience, resilience is, is really tied up to that. Uh, what makes a resilient leader? Oh. <laughs> Because you talk about resilience in delivery, Must a right? leader be resilient? Must a leader be resilient? I mean, uh, you know, there are, there are different types of leaders. Uh, one is in the front, and the, frankly speaking, the more powerful one are the kingmakers. Mm. You know, they are the ones that determine you know, the future leaders. Mm. So when you ask me about what is a resilient leader, mm. I believe a resilient leader is not someone who never falls, but mm. who can you know, pick himself up whenever he falls. Mm. And to be able to rebound and recall as required. The most important thing now is how is this thing, you know, where is that energy, you know, that, that mm. allow this person to move mm. in the way that he's moving? Inner firmness of purpose. Mm. Right? And this inner firmness of purpose is actually self-discovery. Right. And uh, there are ways in which you can be better attuned to this. One of it is this modern term called mindfulness, you know, yes. to be aware of being aware of the here and yes. now and, and to be able yeah. to be attentive and things like that. I'm just reading Dr. Ellen Langer's work right. uh, on mindfulness as well. Yes. Right. So this is going to be the catch word because now uh, the youth of today, they are multitasking everything at the same time. Even I think young ladies like you also have multitasking, <laughs> you know, but you only can do one, one thing, thing at a time, at a time yeah. and do it well. Mm. So uh, the challenge now is where do you put your priorities? Mm. Yeah, and so refocusing around one central, like you say, purpose. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk also in terms of a, a practical sense. So we're t we've been talking about very much this idea of, of purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be worked out in an organizational sense, but also on a personal sense. Yes. And, and how so on a personal level? Uh, with regard to which? Individuals. I know, but individuals mm -hmm. with regard to which perspective? Um, Say, for example, in a work context. For detachment? What is the word that you are now looking okay, at? Okay, so for purpose, when you say? The purpose of a company, the purpose of an individual. Yeah, correct. That's very easy. Mm -hmm. The purpose of an individual is in your job description. All right, mm -hmm. You have that job description. Mm -hmm. The purpose of a company, you have a vision and mission, and you have the mandate. Mm -hmm. now the, the challenge now is with your vision and mission, with your terms of reference, how do you now fit into the industry? Mm -hmm. How do you now fit into the big ecosystem that is around you? Mm -hmm. Now, there's lots of things about, you know, I mean, uh, competition, you know, you know, making sure, you know, that you're better than the rest. You want to have a competitive advantage. Mm. Now, that is nice, mm. you know, but ultimately advantage for what? Better than your enemy, better than your competitor. Mm -hmm. The issue now is that uh, there's this new word, I mean, not new, this word called co-optation. You mm -hmm. cooperate and compete yes. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Ultimately now to have a bigger market share yes. amongst those who are in this uh, cooperation. Yeah, you grow the pie. Uh, you take a bigger part of the pie by making sure that the other people in the pie also get, have some pie. Get, no, they, they're out of the pie. Okay, right? but then, when, then where does cooperation come in? Uh, you only cooperate among the people that you want to cooperate with. Okay. So you are the chosen few. Right? Okay, and then and you, you then push move out the rest. Quite got it. Right. Okay. okay, got it. Now, um, this is nice, but that is at that one level where it comes to profit. You talk about margin, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm advocating is profitability. Now, it's mm. just not that, uh, you know, that one time. Mm. Now, Prahalad says about uh, not just market share, but opportunity share, the mm -hmm. future. And I think what is more important today in business is just not profit, it's profitability. Mm. How do you sustain that profit, meaning that profitability? And you can only, or I would say, we can only maintain you know, our status and sustain this profit mm -hmm. by ensuring that there is a social impact, there is actually you know, a giving back to society, mm -hmm. and being relevant you know, to the economy where you know, the customer is. Mm. And so if we were to sum it up, uh, there's so much stuff in there. Um, by the way, if you'd like to know more, um, the book is available in, in all uh, leading bookstores. Uh, but if we were to sum it up, and uh, what do you think are, is just two thoughts uh, that organizations uh, today, when they look at management, uh, they, are, uh, they could really be reminded of? You no, know, there's so many tools, so many methods, so many frameworks that are available in universities and courses. But what the university and what uh, management scientists cannot teach is about culture, mm. right? 
Now, I think in this fast-moving pace that we are now in, we need to be more aware of the cultural values of people, and local as well as global. And that takes time. Mm. You know, this immersion thing takes time. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything faster, cheaper, better. You know, and that time I can actually through reading the history, to reading more research. But the important thing now is, in order to better understand the culture of other people. You have to know yourself first, mm. and that's where this inner firmness of purpose is important. Mm. And what's another thought? Another thought is, as I mentioned earlier, is really it is not the result; mm. it is the process of reaching to the result that's important, mm. and how we prioritize in our process, mm. and that's the challenge. Mm. Again, back to the first thing: in order for you to prioritize, you must know what is basically your composition. Mm. In the Gita, they talk about the gunas. They talk about the different ways in which you know can fit into a certain paradigm. Mm -hmm. But uh, for want of a better word, is really you know your priority in processing mm. right, right, can ultimately lead you to the final result that you deem that you, it should be there. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me, Lily. Okay, so we've been here with Dr. Charles Chow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.